Gehenna, what the hell is it? Gehenna means Valley of Hinnon, for it is the Greek form of the Hebrew Gehenna in the book of Joshua, chapter 18 and verse 16, where the Valley of the Sons of Hinnon occurs, the Greek Septuagint translation reads Gehenna. It occurs 12 times in the New Testament, first appearing in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. The Valley of Hinnon lay to the west and south of ancient Jerusalem. Under Later kings of Judah, it was used for false worship of a pagan god to which human sacrifices were offered by fire. See Second Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 3, chapter 33 and verse 6, the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 31 and 32, chapter 32 and verse 35. To prevent its use again for such religious purposes, faithful king Josiah had the valley polluted. See Second Kings chapter 23 and verse 10. The Valley of Hinnom became the dumping place and burning of waste material for the filth of Jerusalem. Bodies of dead animals were thrown into it to be consumed in the fires to which sulphur or brimstone was added to assist the burning. Also, bodies of executed criminals who were considered undeserving of a decent burial in a memorial tomb were thrown in. If such dead bodies landed in the fire, they were consumed. But if their carcasses landed upon a ledge of the deep ravine, their putrefying flesh became infested with worms or maggots, which did not die until they had consumed the fleshly parts, leaving only the skeletons. No living animals or human beings were thrown into Gaena to be burned alive or tortured. Hence, the place could never symbolize an invisible region where human souls are tormented eternally in literal fire or attacked forever by undying worms because the dead criminals cast there were denied a decent burial in a memorial tomb, the symbol of the hope of a resurrection. Gehenna was used by Jesus and his disciples to symbolize everlasting destruction and annihilation from God's universe or second death and eternal punishment. Therefore, to have one's dead body cast into Gaena was considered the worst kind of punishment. From the literal Gaena and its significance, the symbol of the lake burning with fire and sulphur was drawn. See Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10, 14 and 15, and Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. The biblical use of Gaena as a symbol corresponds to that of the lake of fire in the book of Revelation. It is evident that Jesus used Gaena as a symbol of utter destruction resulting from the judgment of God. Hence, with no resurrection to bodily life being possible, see Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, Luke chapter 12 and verses 4 and 5, the scribes and the Pharisees as a wicked class were denounced as subjects for Gehenna. See Matthew chapter 23 verses 13 to 15 and verse 33. To avoid self-destruction, Jesus' followers were to get rid of anything causing spiritual stumbling, the cutting off of a hand or foot and the tearing out of an eye, figuratively representing their Deadening of these bodily members with reference to sin. See Matthew chapter 18 and verse 9. Mark chapter 9 verses 43 to 47. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. And compare the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 to verse 30. Jesus also quoted from Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 24 in describing Gehenna as a place where their maggot does not die and the fire is not put out. See Mark chapter 9 and verse 47 and 48. The symbolic picture here is not one of torture but rather of complete destruction. It is evident from the fact that the Text quoted from Isaiah dealt not with persons who were alive but with the carcasses of the men that were transgressing God's law. If 
as the available evidence indicates, the Valley of Gehinnon, or the Valley of Hinnon, was a place for the disposable disposal of garbage and carcasses. Fire, perhaps, increased in intensity by the addition of sulphur. See Isaiah chapter 13, verse 33 would be the only suitable means to eliminate such refuge. Where the fire did not reach, worms or maggots would breed, consuming anything not destroyed by the fire. On this basis, Jesus' words would mean that the destructive effect of God's judgment would not cease until complete destruction was attained. James, the brother of Jesus, uses the word Gehenna to show that an unruly tongue is itself a world of unrighteousness and that one's all round of living can be affected by fiery words that defile the speaker's body. The tongue of such a one, full of death-dealing poison and so giving evidence of a bad art condition can cause the person to be sentenced by God to go to the symbolic Gehenna See James chapter 3 verses 6 and 8. Gehenna also symbolizes the purifying fires of the mind. Our God is a consuming fire and when judgments or times of tribulation take place in our consciousness the wrong thought is utterly consumed, swallowed up by the love and perfection and truth of spirit. See Song of Solomon or Songs of Songs in the Old Testament chapter 8 and verse 6. Set me as a seal on your art, as a seal on your harm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a very flame of Yahweh. There will be no termination of these cleansing, purifying process until there is no more refuge to be burned, then this fire of God will express in us as eternal life. See 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 13 to 15. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Again, who among us can dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? Not the wicked, but he that walks righteously and speaks uprightly. See Isaiah chapter 33 verses 14 to 16. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. He who despises the gain of oppressors. He will dwell on high. His place of defence will be the fortress of rocks, bread will be given him, his water will be sure.